Undead expansion brings lots of new content into Minecraft, which is themed around the undead. You'll discover new mobs, obtain new equipment, and create your own mob spawners, which can be used for collecting materials. At the time of this video, it's available to Forge users only. And if you like the look of it, you can find the link to download it in the description below. A new structure that can be found in the plains, savanna, and forest biomes is the grave. In the middle is grave soil, which can be broken with a shovel to receive items like iron and gold nuggets. Though if you break it at night, the rewards will be better, and you might get items like diamonds and blighted remains. But be careful, the haunter might spawn. You're disturbing his grave after all. Another structure is the loot chamber, which is like a small dungeon. It's made up of lots of new blocks that are provided by Undead Expansion, and there are lots of chests that can be searched. All of the barrels are empty, so they can be ignored. Wandering Knights also spawn here, but we'll talk about them shortly. The first mob is the Revenant, which is a lot like the Phantom. After not sleeping for several nights, you might notice a pair of glowing green eyes that follow you. When it's attacked or damaged, it will reveal itself as a deathly creature. If you're hit by the Revenant while it's invisible, then you might receive a death light effect, which will cause your health to rapidly decrease. The burn during the day and drop bones, lighted remains, and cursed cloth. In the nether, you can find the demon. They're immune to fire damage and knockback, while they themselves also have high knockback damage and can set targets on fire. So if you fight a demon, you'll want to keep it at a distance. When killed, demons will drop nether warts and embers. Within overworld loot chambers, you can find the Wandering Knight. Their metallic armor makes them difficult to kill, and they're immune to knockback. But if you do manage to kill them, they drop pieces of their equipment and fractured plating. Also inside these underground dungeons is the Wandering Knight leader, which is stronger than regular Wandering Knights. They're tricky to kill, as they can summon Evoker Fangs under the player and deal a lot more damage. I'd recommend kiting the leader as much as possible to avoid taking damage and keep moving around. As a drop, the Wandering Knight leader can drop their equipment and fractured plating. Finally, there's the Haunter, which we briefly mentioned before. Haunters can spawn from a grave when it's disturbed, but they also have a chance of spawning during the night when you kill a non-undead creature. Their fast moving can hit you with the blindness effect and they drop ectoplasm. One of the two new sets of armor is the Wandering Knight set. Pieces can be obtained by killing Wandering Knights as they have a chance of dropping pieces of it. An alternative helmet is available, which is obtained from the Wandering Knight leader instead. It's slightly stronger than iron and weaker than diamond. Although it's still worth wearing, as having a full set equipped gives the Knight's Resolve buff. When taking damage from any source, you have a chance to receive the resistance effect. The other set of armor is the Deathbringer set, which makes you look a lot like the Revenant. Wearing the full set gives the Death's Hand buff, which makes you immune to the Death Blight effect and allows you to inflict it on the targets. The Deathbringer set can be crafted from Cursed Cloth, Blighted Remains, and Phantom Membrane, most of which can be obtained from killing Revenants. There's a set of rusty tools which are quite weak. These can be obtained from skeletons, who have a chance to spawn with them instead of a bow. One use for them is that they can be upgraded into iron tools using iron nuggets, making them much cheaper to craft. One of the more powerful weapons is the high-frequency Murasama Blade. It deals slightly more damage than a netherite sword, though its most notable feature is that when you sneak an attack, you can do a special attack, which damages multiple enemies at once, it can be created by upgrading a netherite sword with a gun trigger sheath, and a weaponsmith villager has a chance of selling the gun trigger sheath for 25 emeralds and 15 fractured plating. There's also the fang sword, which can be dropped by the wandering knight leaders. Hitting targets with the fang sword will give them the mark of evil effect, which can cause evoker fangs to spawn under their feet. If the sword is damaged, then place it inside an anvil and repair it using fractured plating. Rotting arms can be easily obtained by digging up a grave. Their damage is only equivalent to a stone sword, but they have slightly higher attack speed and are able to slow targets and cause nausea, so it's still a useful weapon. The final weapon is the Grave Scythe. It can be crafted from two sticks, two iron ingots, an ectoplasm, and a fractured plating. When using this as a weapon, other creatures besides haunters will be able to drop ectoplasm. Let's take a look at some items, with the first being Creeper Husk. These can be obtained by hitting creepers with a sharp weapon like an axe or sword. They're used to craft impact grenades along with iron ingots and gunpowder. 
Impact grenades can be thrown to damage entities, and they won't destroy blocks. Embers are an item that's dropped by demons in the nether. Eight of these can be used to craft a bucket of lava, which is quite useful. But they can also be used as fuel, with them being able to smelt 16 items at a time compared to coal, which only smelts eight. Ectoplasm is dropped by hunters and other mobs if you're using the Grave Scythe. Besides being used in the recipe for the scythe, they can be used to make some nether-related blocks like soul sand, soul soil, and soul torches, without having to even enter the dimension. There is also a blight o lantern which can be crafted using a carved pumpkin and blighted remains. Right now, I'm not sure what this does, if anything, but I still think it looks cool. There's no mention of this item on the mod page. One of the key mechanics in Undead Expansion is the ability to create your own mob spawners. This can be done by creating a hollow spawner, which requires four fracture plating, four spawner shards, and one blighted remain. Spawner shards can be obtained from breaking spawners, which you'll mostly find in the newly added loot chambers. To get started with a custom mob spawner, you'll need four ashes of the same mob. Monster ashes are a new item, and they can be dropped by zombies, skeletons, endermen, creepers, and spiders. Each creature has its own ashes, and they can only be obtained when the mob dies by burning and even then the chances of them dropping aren't guaranteed. So it's a good idea to head out at dawn when mobs start burning or equip a sword with the fire aspect enchantment. When you've crafted a hollow spawner, place it down and add the four mob ashes of your choice and then right-click it with an ectoplasm to enable it. Creatures will then begin to spawn over time, so you've now got your very own mob farms. Currently, there's a few advancements included. There isn't many right now, but the developer states that they plan to add more in the future. Some new decoration blocks are added too, which will be great for your builds. It's called Shaded Stone, and you can find and mine them naturally by exploring the new loot chambers. But they do have their own crafting recipes as well, with the Shaded Stone bricks being made from coal and regular stone bricks, and they can then be made mossy, cracked, chiseled, and turn into walls, slabs, and stairs. That covers every item included with Undead Expansion in its current state. The mod was last updated two months before this video went live, and it seems that the developer does have some future plans that might come to fruition, which involves some new mobs and more mob ashes, so that more creatures can be added to spawners. Quite a lot of recipes in this video require blighted remains, so just remember that the easiest way to obtain these is to kill either revenants or dig up grave soil during the night. It's also worth mentioning that there's no config files, so enabling and disabling features isn't possible unless you use a third-party mod like Bad Mobs. And depending on when you're watching this, parts of this video might become outdated if the mod does receive further changes. That's the end of the Undead Expansion Mod Showcase. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and subscribe, as I'll be covering more showcases in the future, with other types of content coming soon, including mod lists, texture packs, and data packs.